hello everyone and welcome back to my channel in this week's make what you see in the shops we're gonna make a blouse out of satin and i have this beautiful white one and it will be the blouse that i showed you in the preview a few weeks ago um the top shop one with the open sleeves and i thought it was a really different uh look that i've never seen before so i really want to recreate it so it will be out of satin and most people think satin is difficult to sew i did water some uh, videos before uh, this sewing with satin and uh, the last one i also put a whole list of tips on how to do that so i will insert it in this video too i will put it now in just one clip uh, some tips how to sew with satin how it can help you that it won't be that difficult because really it isn't that difficult to sew but just you have to make sure you do some things uh, to make it clear so we're going to make this blouse um, and i'll give you uh, some more options how to make the sleeves because i'm going to adjust it uh, not going to make it exactly the same as the top shop one um, so i'll give you three options how to make your sleeves also a more wider blouse sleeve if you like that more and uh, i will show you how to do that so i hope you like it if you like my videos please subscribe please like them uh, leave a comment if you have something to ask or something to say or like Mark Montana always say just if you just want to say hello because I like that too and I always reply to you so thank you so much already for watching and I'll show you how to make this blouse so and this is the blouse that we're going to recreate and you can see the sleeves are rather white and they are strangely open and that's the fact that I really like, it's really different. Um, maybe you see in the picture on the right that the sleeves are not totally sewn in the armhole, it's just about halfway I think. I'm not going to do it like this but I'm going to show you how you can do it like this if you like this. I'm going to sew mine just in the whole armhole and then just leaving that uh, sleeve seam open. I think that is more uh, nice than this really open concept as this is but if you like this I'll show you how you can do it like this so the, the sleeves are pleated on the top on the shoulder part and also on the cuff part so we're gonna make that and you can choose how wide you want your sleeves to be I also show you how you can change your basic sleeve to uh, whatever with you uh, you would like to do uh, and then we make the collar like this with the ties to bow in the front if you like or to let them hang loose like this one and we're gonna attach those ties uh, in the back on the mid back of your uh, back pattern and they're gonna hang loose in the front and the front part will be with a button down uh, just a round neck uh, and then buttons down to the end and I'll make my water uh, loose so not really tight fitted but also you can do whatever you like and I show you in the pattern how you can uh, change it or arrange it to uh, your uh, uh, the way you like it so i made my drawing and for the new viewers yes i cannot draw at all it looks awful but it's just a reminder on what i want to make and how i want to make it so if you cannot draw don't worry that doesn't mean that you cannot design that you cannot sew uh, you don't need it if you don't have to make nice pictures for whatever reason so what we're going to do is we make a round neckline uh, and we're going to finish uh, the mid part and the neckline with a facing that we cut on the pattern. And I'll show you when we make the pattern how we do that. And for the same uh, is on the back neckline we make a facing there too. Uh, I took the tie bow away just to show you this. But of course this one will be on this side too. Uh, so we make a high collar here like this. And uh, going on into that tie uh, that is hanging loose or you can tie it in a bow whatever you like and it's going from the back part going on to the left and the right on the front then the sleeves will be gathered here on top and as I said I will um, insert the sleeves all the way down the armhole uh, the top shop blouse doesn't have doesn't has that it stops around halfway I think and then it is open from uh, halfway your armhole going down to the cuff but I will just sew it on onto the side seam so the whole armhole and then I will leave the sleeve seam open and I like that more than when it's all the way open still here because then it's a lot of yeah I, I don't like it. it's too much openness for me so we gather it here on the top we gather it, gather it down at the cuff the cuff will be just tight around the wrist and you get a bit of a poof depending on how much gathering you uh, give. I will make the same sleeve as I did for the sweater of 
was it last week or the week before the sweater for, uh, that is matching the Chanel-esque skirt um, I will use that same pattern but I also show you what you make when you want to make your sleeve more wide uh, with more gatherings on top and the bottom how you do that and I will show you if you wanted to make it like the top shop one just by uh, putting it halfway in the armhole and leaving the rest hanging down then you get that that um, flowiness here that the top shop picture had but I don't like that for me so I will do, won't do that for me um, the back will be just plain simple you'll just see here the uh, collar standing up for the bows in the front and the rest is just plain and simple just for the facing as the same as for the front so that is what we're gonna make and I'll show you what the pattern will be so for the pattern I will use my basic pattern for the top and we do do a little bit of adjustment to it um, what we will need is we need an overlap in the mid front for the buttons so what you do is you extend the mid of your um, pattern of your basic pattern with three centimeters then you have here nice a row for your buttons to the left and to the right and then what we also need is we need that uh, facing part that's going underneath here and underneath the button row and for that you take uh, a piece of paper that you fold over and then you can exactly trace your neckline then make it around five centimeters wide and then go in a curved line, line back to the bottom and this is I think about six centimeters let's see how much I did this yes this is about six centimeters and then when you cut that onto the pattern that you already have or when you, when you make a new one you can just trace your old pattern and cut this on then you have your facing nicely attached to your pattern and the normal way I just fold it over the right, right way but normally it will be of course like this and it will be below your um, front part of your top and of course this is your neck hole for the front this is for the back but I always have this one uh, basic pattern for the front and the back I just cut it out here for the front and cut it out here for the back so that will be your adjustment for your um, top part what I will also do is I don't want it fitted like we made our basic pattern this is the normal line I will make it more wide so I cut my pattern just straight on and what I also did if you saw my video about the um, white sweater matching the Chanel skirt um, we made the puff sleeves here and for me that was too much I have rather broad shoulders and I'm very short so it was a bit, little bit of too much here at the shoulder part so what I do now is I make my shoulders the shoulder seam shorter so I cut off two centimeters here and the dotted line will be my new line where I uh, cut my uh, fabric off if you have a norm, normal shoulders a normal body type don't do it just take your normal measurement as you did when you made this pattern but for me it is better to make my shoulders a little bit smaller so that I have my puffy sleeve here and it will not be too much uh, in width so that is what I do for adjustments just for myself but, so this is what your pattern will look of course the back will be just your normal plain back pattern with your back so for the facing for the back you take an extra piece of paper you align them with your back neck hole and then you make it five centimeters wide as for the front facing and here also five centimeters wide and then you make a curve and then you have exactly the shape of your back neckline with a facing of five centimeters wide I hope you can see it it looks like this then for the sleeve I will use the sleeve pattern that we made for the white sweater as I shared the Chanel sweater um, if you haven't uh, made that one you can also watch my basic pattern for how to make a sleeve I will link that down below in the description box too because I also there show you the basic pattern but also how you can make these adjustments to get a more puffy sleeve here on the top so there you can make this uh, pattern I'm going to use this one if you want to um, make the sleeve like it was on the Topshop one uh, what that one didn't have because they don't put it all the way through here in the armhole they put it only halfway and they leave the rest of the sleeve just hanging out 
then what I would suggest you to do is not make this curve into your uh, sleeve but just let it go out and then going down so skip this curve here and here it's really a dip make it just straight on to your side seam to your sleeve seam like this then you have more here of um, well, well it's, it's a more straight uh, uh, curve so not with a dip and then going down and then you just uh, gather it in and you just um, put it in your armhole halfway and just let the rest leave hanging uh, and then I would suggest that you make a, a more flowy over, overflow to your sleeve seam not just with an, a 90, 90 degree angle um, Okay, this is editing me coming in because I think that didn't make any sense So I thought I'll draw you how you must adjust your sleeve if you want to make the top shop sleeve So this is how your normal sleeve would look with the head like this with a dip to the um, Side seams and here your sleeve seam and what, how you must change it is like this you, you have still that head but you make an ongoing curve going down to the bottom of your sleeve so you don't have that dip you don't have this angle here you make it just a rounded one and then you attach it to your uh, armhole from here to here just about and this is all hanging loose and then you get that flowiness that that top shop sleeve has and only attached to the top of your armhole so i hope you understand what i meant to tell you um, if you want to make another sleeve, a more wide sleeve, I'll put this one aside. And this one is also for one of my subscribers that wanted to have uh, a more widely sleeve pattern. So this one is for you Damien. I hope I understood what you wanted to know. Um, take your basic pattern, just your plain basic pattern. I hope you can see that I'll put some brown paper underneath. So now it's better to see I think. So this is your basic pattern. Um, in the basic pattern tutorial we cut it here and here. You can do that when you want to make adjustments. But what you also can do is cut it lengthwise. So with, uh, through these red lines. And then you can widen it out like this. And you can do as much as you like. But what it gives is that you get more room here on top of your sleeve so you can gather it in more and you also get more width on the bottom of your uh, sleeve so you can gather it in there too uh, on a cuff or maybe with elastic on the, bottoms, on the bottom that is a really nice way to widen your sleeve totally so not only on the head of the sleeve as I did for that white sweater but for your whole uh, sleeve part on top and on the bottom so if you would like to do that you can do it like this just cut your basic pattern uh, uh, tape it on a new piece of paper trace it out and then you have a new pattern for more wider sleeves that you can get all the way around and you can also of course do it like this then you have more width on top and less on the bottom or the other way around like this you can do that too you get all kinds of things just by cutting off your cutting in parts your basic pattern and make your adjustments like this and then for the cuff of the sleeve I always like it when the cuff of my sleeve is tight enough but that I can take my hand out without opening up the buttons because I hate when I have to do the buttons here where I can hardly reach it and hardly uh, button up the small button so I always try to get it as tight as I can but still can get my hand through without unbutton it so I made mine 20 centimeters plus 2 centimeters overlap because you have to put them on top of each other and I made it 5 centimeters wide and then doubled because of course you need a double uh, cuff so you need two of these of course so we cut our pieces I hope you can see it with the white on the white two front pieces one back piece two sleeves um, two cuffs and one facing for the back from now on of course we also need the collar with the ties for the front but I'm gonna cut that later um, and uh, make sure when you cut this that you give enough uh, seam allowance in the um, uh, sleeve seams so this one the two sides of the sleeve because we're gonna hem it we're not gonna sew it together so you need some more seam allowance to make a double hem 
and when you make the top shop sleeve i'll call it like that then you must be sure that you have enough seam allowance here in the armhole where you don't attach the sleeve because then also you need to hem this double so you need more here um and then i will insert after this clip um the sewing tips for how to sew a set and i did that in the clip uh, in the video where i made the satin skirt and i put them in between the faces but now i will just put it in one clip that you can see what to do and how to sew with satin because uh, some things you must do a little bit different or you must know how to do it so i will put it after this clip and uh, now i'll tell you first what we're going to do now is we're going to show uh, sew the shoulder seam so put your front patterns on top of your back pattern with the white sides together of course I marked where my facing line was, so I have to take that pin out. So align the shoulder seams like this and the other side. And then we're going to sew both the shoulder seams. So now we're going to sew our both side seams. I have put my cutting mat underneath and hoping that you can see the beautiful shine of this fabric. But I think the camera is not really picking it up, but it looks really nice already. Make sure you iron your seams uh, immediately after you've sewn it and you get a more nicely result. And it's better to uh, go on with that when you already uh, iron down all the seams. So this is for the top part, we put that aside for a while. <coughs> Sorry. And now we're going to go on with the sleeves. And what you're going to do is you're going to gather the top part of the sleeve. I usually go from here to here, just about the head of the sleeve. Um, if you do the uh, uh, top shop sleeve, you can do it all the way down because you don't have this edge here. Then you can gonna get a whole the uh, the whole head of the sleeve, and you can also already uh, gather the bottom of the sleeve. Then you don't have to do that later on. That's easier than when your um, sleeve is already inside your top. So we're gonna do that, and you do that by uh, using a basting stitch and then a two row of a basting stitch next to each other. On the top of the head and after you've done that then you can hem the side seams of the sleeve so both the, the sides that you normally sew together now you can hem that just by folding it in a little bit and folding it in again so a small world hem to finish up the sides of your sleeve your sleeve in half that you can mark where, where the middle is and then put it into your armhole of your uh, top and then align the mid of your sleeve to the shoulder seam so match your pin with where the shoulder seam is of your top and then pin them together and I like to sew um, a sleeve onto um, the top and not the other way around so I put my pins on the side of the sleeve so I can sew it from there and then what you do is you take um, the ends of your sleeve so what should be normally your sleeve seam and I hope you can see what I'm doing and you align them that that uh, hemmed part of your uh, sleeve with the side seam so here is the side seam and you put just that end of your sleeve exactly onto that side seam can you see that and you put one end you pin there and then search for the other end of your sleeve just follow 
the gathered part of your sleeve and somewhere you will find the other sleeve seam or hemmed seam and then again match that with the side seam and it means that both the uh, hemmed sleeve seams are touching. So I see that the first one I should put a little bit closer to the side seam because now they are not touching and I don't want a gap in between. So I have to put this a little bit further to the side like that. Then you have your sleeve attached to your top and now what you do is you pull on the gatherings, the stitching for the gatherings that you just made and then you make the um, width of your sleeve, that is this, the same as the width of your top. You see this is more than this and at this, that means that you get gatherings here and you pin them to the part of the top nicely distributed for the front and for the back. So like this, so first you attach the part that is not gathered and then you can see how much room you need <coughs> for the gatherings or how much room you have for the gatherings and then you can distribute it nicely that it is evenly along the whole line and the same for the other side and then you can stitch it down and finish it with a zigzag or an overlock stitch I will do it with my surgery as usually as usual but uh, you can just do it with your sewing machine and when you're doing the um, top shop sleeve um, make sure you also um, finish the part of your armhole that you're not attaching your uh, sleeve to so this is what it looks like when the sleeve is pinned in um, the uh, what used to be the sleeve seams are touching here at the side seam and the gatherings here are uh, pinned down and with uh, a sleeve with pleats or uh, f um, gatherings like this I always like to sew on the side of the sleeve um, when I have just a normal uh, sleeve I rather do it from the other side because then you can curve it down and you, then you get a more nicely fit in the sleeve uh, or in the armhole but now with this I would like to sew on the um, gathering side because then I can watch my gatherings that they don't shift or go anywhere so that's what we're gonna do now Now we're gonna go on with the cuffs and I see now that you can see the dog that we just adopted in December the very old bull he is called he is almost 16 years old and he's a medium-sized dog so that is really old he's sleeping there and when I film I always have to put Chabo away because he's too enthusiastic he makes too much noise but for the cuffs I put some uh, medium interfacing underneath both of them so that they get some more structure, they are more stiff. And uh, what I also do when I was ironing da this down, I put some interfacing on the facing part of my um, bodice, of the top. And I put it on this part. And I didn't make the, the, it as stiff as this one, I just did light uh, interfacing on this part, I'll fold it down, you can see what part I mean. This part is the one that you shoot your interfacing on, and just uh, a light one is enough just to give it a little bit more, more structure for your button row, then it just stays in place better than uh, when you don't do it. I didn't put it on the uh, facing for the back neck, back neck hole, so for that part. I didn't do that because I think with two layers of fabric that is enough for my neckline but certainly do it for this part of your uh, front. So for the cuffs what you do is you fold them right sides together and you're gonna sew down the two ends 
And then we're gonna gather the bottom of the sleeves and we're gonna attach it to one of the ends of the of the cuff, so the outer part of the cuff. So now when you put your cuffs right side out again, you have cut your uh, corners from the inside so that you can get a nice crisp uh, edge. Um, and then what you do is you're going to gather the uh, bottom of your uh, sleeve and you're going to match that with the bottom of your um, cuff. And what you can do now is you have two centimeters overlap. Uh, for the left or the right, depending on what uh, uh, sleeve, well, which sleeve it is. Um, but because we have an open sleeve, you can also gather, put the gatherings from one end to the other, and then they will overlap. The, the sleeve seams will overlap a little bit where the cuff is overlapping. I'm, I'm going to do that. Normally, you can uh, stop where your overlap starts. Uh, so that it's not doubled up, <clears throat> but I like it now because the sleeve is already that much open to just close it up till the end. And by gathering, I <coughs> assume you know, you take the top or the bottom parts of your two rows of gathering, doesn't matter which one, and you just pull. And I like to pull from one side and from the other side that I don't have to risk that I pull all my threads out. So when you have the width of your gatherings and of your cuff aligned, you can sew that down and then when you put the cuff up, you flip the seam allowance to the inside and you fold the seam allowance of the other side of the cuff in and then you can choose if you want to top stitch this or sew this by hand. I will do it by hand because I don't really like when you see a top stitch here on set and I don't like how that looks. But if you like that, certainly do that. So then your cuff is totally finished when you've done that. And then it looks very nice. The only thing you have to do then is make your buttonholes and your buttons at the end or snaps or whatever you like. And do that, of course, for both sleeves. Now you're gonna sew your back facing to the front facing just by putting the shoulder seams together and maybe now it is not obvious how it is but just lay your uh, back facing to the back and then you see where you have to attach these two and then what you do is you place them together to the bodice and you pin that down with a few pins so that you're sure that uh, they sit in the right place and then what I got, did is I cut my collar with the ties and I made mine the width of my fabric that is uh, 150 centimeters and I just cut the ends in a little bit of a point so that it's nicer for the uh, ties to end like this and I made mine 14 centimeters um, wide uh, plus seam allowance and that means that it will be doubled so when it's finished it will be seven centimeters wide like this and then what we do is we're going to pin this onto our bodice part so all the way around the neck hole and then with the parts leaving out that are the bow tie so mark your middle of your tie mark the middle of your bodice line them up and then pin them all around around the um, shoulder seam and then also make sure that you um, put your facings of your front uh, going in like they should be so to the inside of it also pin them down that they cannot shift so that you can put your collar or your tie whatever part you want to call it on top of both the parts, so on top of the bodice and the facing. Normally you always uh, put your collar in between the facing and the bodice, but now just we go on top of it because we're gonna uh, fold it over when we've sewn this on. And you flip it off, up, you flip it double and same with the uh, cuffs. You take it in one centimeter and you 
pin that down and because this is a collar you have to top stitch it otherwise it will not stay nice and flat so then you can top stitch here the attaching uh, attachment of the uh, seam allowance here and also top stitch the top of the collar down here so that this will stay nicely flat so we're gonna do that we're gonna pin this all the way down then i'm gonna uh, uh, pin down the uh, seam allowance and then we can sew it on and then the only thing you have to do is of course finish your facing parts the uh, the inside uh, end of your facing you can do that just with the zigzag or an overlock stitch or what you can also do is make a small world hem and then top stitch it down that's very nice too of course hem the bottom and then put on your buttons and buttonholes or snaps or whatever you like uh, in the mid front and on your cuffs and then you are totally done so when you pin it on it looks like this this is loose and this is from the overlap to the overlap in the mid front uh, on both sides And the pin down collar with the ties ready to be top stitched. And the blouse and the funny sleeves and mine are just twisting around so they are not always falling open but i really like how this looks because uh, it looks normally just like a nice plain blouse that you can uh, wear for work or whatever something that you have to be nicely dressed but it has just this little nice peak in the back and i think it, it looks really nice and i must say uh, while i was making it and while i was talking about the uh, top shop sleeve as i call it now I was really tempted to make that too so uh, in the next coming up weeks I will make a blouse with that top sub sleeve that is more open here because uh, I realized now it, it is open but you hardly see it now and it, it's no problem but I was really uh, charmed by that top shop sleeve so I'm certainly gonna make it and it's not attached also here on the bottom but just till uh, halfway the sleeve or the halfway the armhole and I think that looks really nice too. So I will do that on uh, one of the chiffon blouses I will be making in the upcoming weeks. So then you can see how to do that if I wasn't clear in this video because I was really rambling and I couldn't find my words and I didn't make any sense I think so and then I can show you how to make it. But I think this blouse is really nice. It's really versatile. You can dress it up, you can dress it down, you can tie it in a bow or what I usually do is just put it like this. And it looks really nice you can put a blazer on top of it or a cardigan or whatever and you have just a nice blouse out of satin and i must say i like satin more than silk i think that silk everyone says it's nice on the skin but i don't really like it i like satin more uh, and also when you have a good quality satin it feels nice it wears nice it, you can wash it very easily and the silk i still uh, although i wash it very carefully I still have the um, feeling that it gets worse where, uh, how, the more often I wash it and the satin you don't have that problem uh, and, and I think it looks really nice and when you have a good quality um, satin you don't even really see, the, see, the, see or feel the difference with silk so I think it's a really nice material it looks very nice the shine is really nice you can, man, can make nice open sleeves and I think it's really a nice um, piece to have in your garment. Uh, maybe you see the difference now with the shoulders that I adjusted uh, compared to the white sweater that I made. I like this more for me because my shoulders are till here and when I make my sleeves starting there then I get really that poofiness and the problem that I had with the white sweater I don't have now. I think now it looks really nice. It's not too much on here. On the shoulder part because the sleeves are just falling over my shoulder now uh, and it's, it's a little bit more slim down here so if you have that same problem certainly do that uh, if you make sure your sleeve has enough uh, room in the upper part in the head of the sleeve then you can just uh, make your shoulder seem smaller 
and put your sleeve more in and then you don't have that broadness on your shoulder part. So I hope you like this tutorial. If anything was not clear as I said in the intro, please leave a comment down below. I will get back to you almost all the same day every time. I try to reply as soon as I see it and uh, if there's anything that you need to know or that you want me to uh, show or that you want me to make, Please just let me know, send me a comment, send me a DM and I will certainly try to do that for you. And um, I can do it in a video, I'll make a separate video out of it, whatever is, uh, is possible. And um, if you like this, if you like me to recreate things uh, that you see in the shops, you can also send me a picture. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't done already, please like, please comment. It will help me to grow our little sewing family and I think that is really nice. So. I'll see you again next week with another satin and chiffon combination. So that will be a really nice one again. And I hope you liked it. And I'll see you again next Sunday. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.